everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Fortress of a podcast about movies, TV shows, video games, and lots of pop culture nerd things. My name is Oscar V, one of your hosts today. And with me, per usual, are two of your other hosts. We got Brian, aka New Reliable, aka Mr. Negative on a Dragon Ball Redemption arc, and Devin, aka Mr. Nowhere. Very, very uh, uh, close to our, our main topic today. Very, hey. you know, <laughs> very, m- m- yeah, there we go. They, they call mm-hmm. him the, the bicycle, bicycle thief. On these streets, <laughs> on the, these the streets. bicycle wrangler, <laughs> the man, the, the man who yeah. steals his own bike. All right, <laughs> yeah. Full context, everyone. My my bike lock jammed, so I had to go get bolt cutters and steal my own bike. <laughs> That's a you story if I've ever heard one, though. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm glad yeah. you didn't get put into a situation where you had to record something to put on Twitter of a white lady screaming at you. Screaming <laughs> at you for stealing your own for bike well, because I'm white. Like, you know, they probably just assume that I'm up to you know. Good That's things, a good right? Samaritan so, right there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's pretty fucked up. I was I was a little worried. I was like, oh wait, you know, like somebody gonna call the cops on me or something. And like nobody. I mean, but to be fair, it's very easy to steal a bike. Like holy shit, if you have the right bolt cutters, that thing went through my <laughs> bike lock clean. Like five seconds tissue each. paper. Like, I, mean, I to be fair, I did get like some giant bolt cutters, to, like just to make sure it would do the trick. But like, right, I had like one of those kind of like wrap like the the cable lock, not like the mm-hmm. the U lock. I bet would would you know you need some bigger ones, but like. Yeah, it, it it snapped like immediately. So it's like, oh, this thing is chaotic. Like, let's put a disclaimer on this Devin's tips on stealing bike segments. Uh, we do not advise on you stealing a bike. <laughs> it's like piracy. You're only allowed to steal it if you already own it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you get out and get some big bolt cutters, there's a lot of things you could do in a lot of ways. It's nefarious or no, like that, you could have some fun. In this segment, we will be going around all the ways that you can steal things with bolt cutters. Very nice. All right, guys. We got a pretty packed show. Very uh, anticipated main topic. I think we're all very excited. I got my Coronas at the ready, ready <laughs> to go. But first, before we get into that, let's get into our first segment of the week. News, news talk. talk. First piece of news. Brian, can you tell me what the fuck Sega is thinking uh, with this final, what they talked about in this uh, financial <laughs> earnings call they had? Uh, so recently we have been seeing that uh, we're finally having our like first round of game upcharge probably since the god late 90s early 2000s uh with the 60 dollars price tag of video games kind of getting around the age where we're going to 70 uh not everybody has adopted it yet but of course sega caught a little bit of wind caught a little sniff as you will of that uh that's no one's been complaining <laughs> about that new price hike so they're like mm, what if we tried to get in on that money we'd like an extra 10 dollars per game the issue with sega is they don't make good video games so <laughs> 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 they're still working on trying to hit that uh, $50 price tag and having a game worth that much. So having a game worth $70 oh, is uh, quite, the, quite the hill for them to, to climb. <laughs> That's funny. I mean, we, it's, it's, this is inevitable. They're all going to be at this price, but it's just so funny. I mean, look, what, what Sonic Frontier sold well, I think, right? And it was reviewed fairly well, but it's still like, oof. So it sold well Sega. and still managed to hit a $30 price tag uh, in months. Uh, when that game come out, like <laughs> September, <it> really? <laughs> November, October. Yeah, it was it was pretty shortly after it released that it came with thirty bucks, and a lot of games end up like that, just because that they can't really sustain that price for very long without people without having like a really huge dip in revenue. And right. I'm trying to think, I can't think of many other Sega properties that I could think of that would be worth seventy dollars. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's tough. I don't know either. Yeah. You know what? People are still gonna buy it because you know that's how it goes. That's how that's how this works. If they're if, as long as they're still making money, they will do whatever the fuck they want. <laughs> Absolutely, that's the biggest thing. If there's greed to be to be had, <laughs> they're gonna go for right, it. Mm-hmm. right. All right. Next piece of news: we we got some some Marvel announcements, Marvel TV announcements. They announced Loki season two will be streaming October sixth of this year, and we'll get into the other <laughs> uh, announcement in a second. But let's talk about Loki real quick. Uh, obviously, because there is some controversy behind this in terms of Jonathan Majors being in it and his reputation and all the alleged and stuff that we've talked about in the past that we won't have to go into detail right now. Because Marvel has yet to say anything about that. They have mm-hmm. remained quiet. I think they're they're purposefully waiting to see kind of how it all plays out. But it, it, it's going to be interesting next couple of months. <laughs> Just to say that. I mean, I think we should all remember what happened with James Gunn and the way they handled that very similarly. And right. that they didn't do anything and was quiet for a very long time to the point that people were getting really upset with them. 
And then they played a little uh, switcheroo real quick for 20 seconds just to get the mm-hmm. everybody to pipe down a little bit. And then they came back with it. Mm-hmm. I don't know if the same thing will happen here only because of kind of what happened with the whole Jonathan Major situation with his PR dropping him and yeah. things like that. That seems more serious. I don't know if anybody wants to touch that with a 10 foot pole. But I guess we really right. won't know until Disney says something. So I'm wondering if they're just trying to hold out on a trailer until like right before this comes out. And then <laughs> uh, go ahead and drop a new person in there. Maybe they're doing some reshoots as we speak. Yeah. As we speak. Some yeah. hard crunch time. That would be really shitty. Maybe just delay Loki yeah. season two until Jonathan Major's like court cases are all over. And then we'll see. Well, who knows when that'll be. You, know? you saw how long, you saw <laughs> yeah. how long uh, Wichamacallits took uh, for um, Rick and Morty. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. But hey, I mean, it, it would be a good time to yeah, reshoot some stuff and maybe multiverse you can do whatever you want basically it's true. that's what everyone's saying it could also be a thing where yeah maybe he's still in season two and then that's the last we see of that kang and the rest of the time it's just a completely different person right it's gonna be interesting uh the next uh different kind of interesting <laughs> piece of news that uh they also announced that echo will be coming out on november 29th but for the first time for a marvel show they are dropping all of the episodes on the same day which to me, saying mm. seems like it's not very good. They don't believe in this at all. And this is it sucks because this is the worst character to do this for because it's a disabled character. Right. It's a character yep. of color. Yep. <laughs> There's so many things that it's like you're just really fucking all the communities in one by putting saying that you don't care about this. But the same thing Ugh. is they're probably right. Cause like it's unfortunate that like this exists right. and this is gonna be probably a flop, but it's nobody really They've had too much time between Hawkeye and this character to kind of put this out. And then also, mm-hmm. I personally didn't find this character. Like, I love the actor. I thought they did a great job. I just didn't find yeah. the character themselves strong enough to have their own TV show. I think this was kind of part of the the overinflation of Marvel TV shows we were having for a little bit right. before they cut down. So I don't know how this managed to go past the chopping block. Uh, if anything would have gotten cut, I would expect this to be. I also wonder if it's a thing where like, because they've talked about how they're trying to trim back on all these Disney and Marvel and Star Wars stuff for to save money. If this is a, is a cost cutting thing where like, instead of putting it out week to week, they'll just put it all at once, get it done. We don't have to think about it ever again. <laughs> I mean, that's hundred yeah, percent what know. it is. I didn't even know if it's cost yeah. cutting. I just don't think that they think it's going to be good enough right. to go uh, week to week that I think probably people watch the first episode. And then just not watch anymore if it's week to week. Mm. At least this, right. you might catch three binged. And, you know, yeah. someone might fall asleep on a few. So the viewer number is going to look better than they probably would otherwise is what's going to happen. Yeah. Dang. That's very true. It's twisted, man. Which is a bummer because, like, uh, I mean, it's been rumored that we're going to get both Daredevil and Kingpin in this at some point. To what capacity, we don't know, obviously. But obviously she plays a big role in that universe of Daredevil and all those characters. So. It would be interesting, and maybe the binge will help that because people will be like, "Ah, that first first two episodes are kind of meh, meh. Oh shit, Daredevil about to be in episode three. Let's go. I don't have to wait three weeks. Let's just watch it, crack it out. I also wonder how many episodes this is going to be. I feel like it's going to be a solid mm. of four. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Damn, I was going to say six. He said four episodes. I mean, how, how many was Hawkeye? I think Hawkeye was six. You think, think this Hawkeye is going to have six. the same amount of episodes as Hawkeye? I don't They've know. They've never done four. That's I feel like true. the small, the lowest the gun is six. six. I don't know, man. That sounds like a lot for this kid. <laughs> Unless they do a Mandalorian situation, like a Boba Fett situation, where it just becomes Hawkeye. Season it becomes two. a Daredevil show yeah. or the Hawkeye show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you could. I don't know. I want it to be good, but I'm. I'm I want it to be good too. That they did maybe some in-house testing and it didn't. It didn't bode well. Right. Mm. It's a bummer. Yeah, we'll see. We'll bummer. fucking see. Next piece of news, Brian. I'm going back to you. What the hell happened to Overwatch Two? <laughs> Blizzard can't catch a fucking bone, dude. It's pretty sad. As we all know, Overwatch 2 was released kind of like a a sleeper drop in October of last year Mm -hmm. after months and months and actually years of no updates to Overwatch. Um, A big part about Overwatch 2 is the fact that they were going to be making a new PvE mode. That was the reason they put the two on top of Overwatch, saying this is going to be brand new game with brand new (laughs) stuff. Um, Not just PvP, but we're going to have a whole new overhaul system that's kind of like almost Borderlands-esque where you can pick skills and level up characters and have a a, great hero experience. After two years of radio silence, they have announced that they are canning all of that work they did on that hero progression system and that PvE. Um, in lieu of that, they're going to be doing uh, some battle pass kind of like single player missions to tell story, uh, kind of like a lot of game multiplayer games are doing right now. Halo has some events kind of like that, some little story events or whatever. And that's what they're they're going with right now. And uh, <laughs> surprising no one, the community's pissed because who would have thought? <laughs> and I can kind of it's understandable why people are so upset. 
Overwatch 1 was a $40, $50 game that you bought. And then after that, you were, you know, able to play the game. That got completely taken out and doesn't exist anymore. In lieu of that, we now have a free-to-play game with a bunch of freemium pay-to-play nonsense that no one loves. And now you don't even get a good game to go with it. You're just kind of stuck in this cycle of what freemium gaming is right now because games as a service is ruling the community and yeah <laughs> yeah uh <laughs> i i feel bad for like the the true overhead oh, overhead overwatch fans because it does seem very much like then what was the point of the sequel <laughs> i mean because that was kind of the thing as a whole like i'm surprised the fact that overwatch 2 exists in any capacity even as just a dlc update to overwatch as a whole is a christmas miracle as we all know Blizzard's been going through issue after issue after issue, and they have not had much time to sit down and develop like as a normal game company. And uh, for a long time, Overwatch 2 was put on ice. I completely thought it was going to be canned as a whole and not exist. They were just going to keep updating Overwatch. And then they surprise right. dropped Overwatch 2 uh, back in October, and that was like a crazy thing. Like, holy shit, I can't believe they even had anything to put out. Mm. But yeah, they were trying to play catch up this entire time after having been put on ice by Bobby Kotick back in the day. And they just couldn't catch it because we have to put out enough content to keep people playing so they keep spending money on cosmetics while also fixing the game so that you can make it what it's supposed to be. That's not a, a development cycle that's viable. So it yeah. ends It ends like this in a, in a whimper. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, sadly I think is becoming more and more the norm for games. Uh, yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> Halo, we all know uh, my feelings about Halo and how that's been going. Uh, what's Halo. another game I think of? Apex Legends has been kind Red of struggling Fall. recently. Redfall Apex is Legend. disgusting. Any game that's had a battle pass has been kind of... Struggling. Modern Warfare 2 is struggling right now. People don't like that game right now. And it's been having a pretty mm. rough development cycle because they're fixing shit that wasn't ready while also trying to make new shit at the same time. Right. I don't know. It's really sad Oof. and it really sucks. But yeah. I almost give Blizzard a little bit of a pass because this shouldn't have existed in the first place. Right. <laughs> and right. I know I know exactly what happened, so it doesn't feel so much like it's like, oh, the developers are just lazy, don't care. Like, no. These people are fighting for their jobs since 2019, <laughs> yeah. basically. All right, we'll see what the next Blizzard controversy is and like, give it a month. <laughs> uh, Diablo 4 <laughs> comes out next month, and they plan on putting out content every four months. So, Oh, boy. Good luck mm. with that. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> don't you that. guys miss the simpler times when games were just like, I do. and all these things? I remember being pissed specifically and when mass effect 3 came out and it had day one dlc to get that fucking character and that's when i was like gaming's dead this shit's ruined <laughs> <laughs> and that was like a decade ago yeah. but the audacity yeah. to do that was so crazy to me and now that's probably the nicest thing someone can do to me in video gaming right right now. Like, <laughs> yeah right to be honest yeah all right that's it for regular news but wait listeners it's time to visit our old friend the trailer park. Cue it! Bob Spaghetti. I'm racist. Not a blanket statement, listeners. It's okay. It's okay. All right. Um, first teaser. Here we go. Five Nights at Freddy's based off the video game. I'm not gonna Bro. lie. Aesthetically, it look I mean, there it looks like it. I don't know if I give a shit, but it looks like it. <laughs> yeah, I got that right. It looks like a very B tier horror movie, but that's most horror movies. So if they I think if they lean into it and just do some ridiculous stuff, I think that'll it'll right. be fun. I just wonder, like, is it like, uh, is it going to be a dude sitting in a box the whole? <laughs> they, <laughs> no way, like, no way. they did show the control <laughs> room. The security guard. I, I thought that was interesting. They did show like the control room that you're in in the game. They got to do a little bit of that because I mean, in a movie that yeah. could be that could translate very well. I think of like right. the moving and the, you know maybe he goes and looks. And then they move around again and like, oof. A lot of Apparently there's a ton of lore. There's also different other games where you do actually like run around and stuff like that. There's not just the the standard one. Right. Um, I've watched mm -hmm. people play these games. I know fucking nothing about any of this. I don't know why people care so much <laughs> about this property. It seems like a nothing I, sandwich to me personally. I went to Chuck E. Cheese as a kid. Yeah, it's scary. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, like you said, aesthetically, this looks like they're trying to keep to like what the game feels like. I don't know as like right. a, a non-game player like fan of this. I can't say for mm -hmm. sure. It's going to be like after the jump scares are gone, though, like there was one shot of like a kid hiding in like the ball pit. And it's just like one of the five night with Freddy's like, you know, mannequin things like over with the red eyes. And it's like that is going to be absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. Like when, the, when right. the fight is happening, the climax of the movie is just going to be dumb. But like before that, yeah. you know, it should be fun. I guess for one thing, do we just think it's going to end with a big jump scare and it's literally going to cut to black credits? <laughs> is that how the movie ends? And then another thing is like, Definitely. guys, what if 
What if this is the second best video game movie of all time? <laughs> <laughs> I say don't sleep on it. I, this game is this video uh, movie. What the fuck is it? This movie has been in production for a little while now. Uh, and it seems like that means that they probably care about it a little bit. At right. Least. I think this shit might slip. Ugh. I think it, it might be. It a might. Hit. It could be like a on the like like Devin was saying a B tier or it could be like a Megan or or some shit like that. It could be on that. I level. think that's what it's supposed to be closest to. I don't think it's supposed to actually be like scary, scary. Like yeah, like you said, there might be some right. jump scares, but I think it's supposed to be more about like the storytelling that's kind of being like a goofy mm-hmm. humor because there is some goofy bits. Yeah. Like I don't know if you guys have seen some shit on TikTok where he's like, "Hey Vanessa," and, like Freddie whatever the fuck his name is. <laughs> no. And then they make a bunch of jokes. <laughs> no. of it. Like, it's supposed to be kind of goofy. Mm-hmm. Right. If this turns into a horror comedy, that could work. That could absolutely yeah. fucking work. So I'm hoping it's it's more akin to that. Um, but after seeing that Twisted Metal uh, teaser, I think anything <laughs> could be better than that. Yeah, <laughs> that's very true. We'll see. All right, last quick trailer. Mortal Kombat got a new announcement. Mortal Kombat 12, now rebranded as Mortal Kombat 1 because we don't give a shit about numbers in the world anymore. <laughs> they're, taking, they're taking notes from the Xbox staff that's the, literally what brian was talking about <laughs> off air before we recorded <laughs> xbox ruined everything microsoft fucked up everything we're going backwards all right spoilers for mortal kombat 11 listeners basically it ends with based on this teaser you can tell uh, it ends with Liu kang becoming a god and reshaping the universe and so this is kind of like a reboot of the, the franchise which is why they're calling it one which i get but it's also weird because it's 12 and it makes me think what's 13 gonna be called i hope it's 13 I hope it goes Mortal Kombat 11, this is 1, and then 13. <laughs> oh, my god! But I don't know. I love this franchise. I love the story. But I, I'm, a, I'm not a big fighting game person, but I love NetherRealm's stories that they make. They're so mm-hmm. ridiculous and, and ludicrous, and they're like just big Michael Bay kind of movies, but in fighting game form. Honestly, it's, it's a lot like the Fast franchise. Like, yeah. A little yeah. bit. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit. Mortal Kombat has a lot of resurrections and uh, yeah. vendettas. And- Remember, I, I watched like the YouTube, like, like movie game movie sometimes with Mortal Kombat and like at one point mm-hmm. they just like replaced like everybody that had died just came back and they went back in time or something I think yeah. it was the last game they kind of did that I mean, yeah. yeah very cool to have all the people back because <laughs> they did some du- like earlier games they did some dumb things with some of the ma- the cool characters oh yeah like, especially Liu Kang his character got Liu Kang has a, a tragic video game history story like yeah. I think he's died he's died multiple times yeah. and so, like it's 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 ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> yeah so we'll see i'm mostly just mad because they put out so much Mortal Kombat. i want my injustice 3 i'm just saying i want my next injustice game they, they have i don't know what they're doing that shit ain't coming but up. this is still cool <laughs> yeah i don't know <laughs> i'll play it when it's ten dollars like i do every other Mortal Kombat. Game. i yeah I'll, that's what I, i'll get the game of the year edition one with everything and late in, uh, in a year after it's out that's it that is the news that is the trailer park everyone guys we have done it shall we now crack open a couple coronas and move into our main topic of the week. Oh, man. <laughs> but you got to hold it with your fist. Oh, yeah. Because, listeners, uh, this is a highly anticipated movie, as we were saying. It's all about family, coronas, mm-hmm. barbecue, everything in between. Because we are in the fortress of Fast X, baby. We <laughs> use Roman numerals, but not really. We're not sure. Fast X. Family, 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 family. family. Speaking Honor. of really family. dumb ways to name a, a franchise, like we were just talking about, this one's real. These are all real dumb. <laughs> so yes, listeners, we are here. We are finally talking about Fast X, the tenth. I cannot believe I just said that tenth film in the Fast and Furious Can you franchise. Not believe it, Can you not believe it? <laughs> Honestly, when we get into spoilers, yes, I couldn't believe it when they call back to a f- past movie. I was like, holy shit, that's a lot of movies ago. <laughs> yes. It, there's so many movies in between some of these movies that they literally have to show you parts of that movie for you to understand. Yes. But it's, it's really, if you think about it, they, they kind of just kind of, what do you say? Like th- this movie kind of brought it full circle with Fast Five, so really it's from Fast Five on is like the main right. you know thing. Which that's not a spoiler, listeners. It's all in the trailer, but yeah, that's what I was getting at. Where it's like as soon as they call back to Fast Five, I was like, damn, that was half of these movies ago. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's so it was nuts. Also the, it was also like when this style of Fast started. Oh, it was like, the best one, easily. Sure. You know, yeah, like so it started with like the Rock throwing Vin Diesel into like a car, and then the next right. thing you know, we're in space. Like, so that's like yeah. before <laughs> that, you know, it felt much more grounded, like the FBI kind of stuff and, you know, right. racing. But like Fast Five really felt like kind of almost like a reboot, you know, and yeah. then mm-hmm. and then they just kind of like took off from there and the, you know, the sky's the limit. So. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so listeners, 
let's uh we'll we'll dig into this, but first, no spoilers. I enjoyed this movie, but I also acknowledge I ranked them. I've made a list oh and ranked all the movies, all ten, because I had to see where it lasted, where it where it was listed. And by at the end of this, I will go through them all. But for now, I'll tell you where Fast X lands, even though I didn't hate it and I thought it was fine, even though it's real dumb, but it's fine. It's better than nine, I'll say that. But out of all the movies, it's still number eight out of ten for me. Whoa, <laughs> Damn. Whoa, 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 whoa. I want to know what's below this. I mean, nine. That's not- slander. <laughs> nine and, and Tokyo Drift. <laughs> nine and three. Yep, that's it. Yeah. Spoilers for my list later on, listeners. Yeah, nine and three are Dude, below what it. What is wrong with Tokyo Drift? Oh, my God. Honestly, See? it's a better movie. It's literally just because none of the OGs are in it, and I don't care about those characters. But it's a better movie. I'll oh. say that, though. <laughs> Y'all got it all backwards. But here we go. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was it's it's fine. It's it, it's better than nine, so maybe my expectations were lower. Um, we'll talk more about Jason Momoa and how he kind of carried this movie. Yeah, yeah. That, I don't want to. <laughs> well, I'll save the rest for spoilers. <laughs> oh man, my girlfriend is gonna re- review bomb us so hard. <laughs> <laughs> we're done for. My girlfriend has a good philosophy, guys. She likes dumb. Like she is self-aware of this. She likes dumb movies. Some movies just need to be entertainment. Not all movies need to compete for Oscars. They don't need to be nominated. Absolutely. They don't even need to be in the building, okay? Some movies are just pure entertainment. Let's see what crazy stuff we can throw on a screen. Why do we watch the MCU? Why do we watch Transformers, okay? We watch big, dumb things sometimes because they're fun. And that is uh-huh. what... <laughs> This is what I've always loved about the Fast franchise. It's self-aware, except for Nine was weird. I don't know what they were doing there. It was like a small studio. I don't know. <laughs> that was like some COVID shit. We'll just, you know, chalk that off. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, Fast X, man, they brought it back to like the good stuff. Like, and, and it's just, it's box office. This is what movies, this is like what they aspire to be. This, in the same way that Rocket League is the reason we have video games. Fast, the fast. Oh, we'll talk about Rocket League reason, in this in just a minute. <laughs> but fast franchise is the reason that we like that movies. It's it's like the reason we started doing movies to just put some silly stuff on a screen, right? And that's what. And there, but the thing I like about it is it's self aware. They know how ridiculous it is, and they're like, we're just going to keep doing it. <laughs> like, yeah, like remember the the last one we went to space. Guess what? This one we're going to do some other crazy stuff, and that's and that's what they do. And it, it's it's self aware. You can't be mad at them. Listeners, I want to read the first text that Devin sent our group chat after he saw this movie. He just wrote, Fast X is the truth in all caps. <laughs> it is the it Messiah. Is. <laughs> yes. It is the Alpha and I the love Omega. It. I love it. It's, it's the reason that we first, when, when Charlie Chaplin first started rolling that camera, he's like, you know one day I'm going to have, one day. one day I hope that they can have two helicopters, which don't even exist yet. <laughs> harpoon a car and then the car jumps off a bridge and then makes the helicopters crash into each other that's exactly what went through charlie chaplin's head when he first started rolling the camera. okay absolutely okay. absolutely <laughs> uh, all right brian uh, what you got gosh. um this was one of the dumbest things i've ever watched before in my life <laughs> i knew i knew it i knew it and i fucking loved it <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yes. I fucking loved yes. it. I, I, it. Uh, so, this movie reminds me a lot of what people felt when Dragon Ball Z started coming back on with Dragon Ball Super, and that people complain that it's just <laughs> at this point there is no storyline. It is pure fan service. There is nothing yes. there. Right. Um, right. To to what Devin was talking about, and like he said, it's like it's self aware. I think what happens in this in in the writing room is Vin Diesel is super serious. He is yes, in tears a million percent. crying as he writes on this paper. And then editors come in and make it stupid because they know it's dumb as fuck. And they're like, no one's going to like this if it's not funny, if we don't like call to it. Or just Vin Diesel's actually serious the whole time and everybody else in the room is just like, yes, this, like, this is dumb as Absolutely. shit. But, like, Vin Diesel's he the is only the only person like, I think that doesn't know how dumb yes, this is. This is. To him, this is Grey's Anatomy. To him, he's writing the soap opera masterpiece. To everyone else, it's the dumbest shit you've ever seen before in your life. Yeah. And that's what it comes across on screen. Oh, he has no honor because without honor, you can't have family. <laughs> and that was the best line in cinematic history. Thank <laughs> God someone knows that this isn't serious. Because if this was taken oh seriously, this would be one of the worst movies to ever come out on camera, <laughs> yeah. on film. Yeah. Charlie Chaplin would right. be turning around in his grave over this. <laughs> Turn- <laughs> I mean, but- I think you can sum it all up with Jason Momoa. Like, because he, like, if you, if you, 
dig too deep into like what he is his performance, you're gonna hate this movie. But if you just kind of like go right. with it, then you're gonna love it. And that's what yeah. that's what you gotta do. You got it. You just gotta roll every every story beat is stupid. Every single one. Every single time, <laughs> Jason. We'll, we'll get into it. when we get to the non the spoilers. We'll whoa. in the fast franchise. The I don't know what they were. Really yeah. Just a vehicle to get to get crazy situations to happen, to get characters where they need to be. Do not think any more deeply about it. But like, like, you know, yeah. did we expect anything more when they made Ludacris? No. Uh, two, early 2000s <laughs> rap, <laughs> po- rap artist Ludacris. And then they took him and made him the scientist of the group. He's the tech genius. <laughs> <laughs> he can't even pronounce half of the words that he <laughs> says in this movie. My favorite is that, and then everyone just knows like jujitsu. Everyone's a kung fu master. Everyone knows everything. <laughs> but he he in the, when he started it. off like one or two, he was just like one of the race guys, like a mechanic or something, right? He's like, a mechanic, he just, yeah. yeah. Another yeah. one of the race people. <laughs> now he was a mechanic, so a, a, a computer genius. hacker. Yeah, I don't think those two things. Uh, co- yeah, that doesn't work. The man took a couple of so Devry curses, a couple ITT tech. He got in there, brother. <laughs> <laughs> IT. <laughs> DeVry University. <laughs> this franchise just is just again, like I was saying, like just 10, 10 fucking movies. Yeah. It's so nuts. And it's just like on, on one hand, what an accomplishment. What a fucking accomplishment. To take this franchise that was basically dead after Tokyo Drift and then just turn it into this. Mm-hmm. It's a it's it's nuts. I love it. <laughs> I mean, here's a question, man. How many like I know they say this is the beginning of the end. There's only going to be 11, right? Or maybe maybe 12. Cause now it might be 12, three. seemingly. Yeah. There's absolutely going to be at least, by the time it's all said and done, there's going to be at least 15 to 20 <laughs> fast movies in yeah. the future. Oh, yeah. Like in our lifetimes, uh-huh. we will probably see 20 fast movies. And I'm okay with that. Yeah. I just want to see what the names are going to be. I can't wait for the more ludicrous names. Just That's keep, what yeah, I want. I want them to go going, back. Like just, so too fast, too furious, and shit like that. I want to get back to that. <laughs> and yeah. then, and then, like Fast Thirty Eight is actually going to be called Fast One. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it. Dude. The Fast going to be and a the prequel. The Fast and Furious. The Fast Furious. The Fast, just, yeah. you know, Furious. All righty. From this point on, let's get into spoilers, listeners. So if you haven't seen this movie or any of the Fast franchise movies, because we will be spoiling the whole franchise most likely, be aware. Um, here we go. Let's I I I want let's let's start here. I think we should start with the best part of this movie, which obviously we've already kind of alluded to, is Jason <laughs> Momoa's villain, whose name I don't even remember because he's Dante. just the Joker. He's the Joker. No, he's the Joker. I don't care what you say, Devin. He is the Joker. <laughs> he's specifically Heath Ledger's <laughs> Joker. Reyes. Yes. Yeah, Dante Reyes. <laughs> that man yeah. is pure. He's chaotic evil going towards chaotic neutral. Um, for a long time, it was just chaotic <laughs> yeah. neutral where he was just doing shit for the sake of doing shit. And I thought that was hilarious. His vendetta hardly even felt like vendetta at some points. It just felt like he was just fucking around. And I loved it. Right. It really yeah. did feel like Jason Momoa just showed up on set and just went into character and whatever he was wearing that day was just. Yeah, <laughs> those are his clothes. A million percent. All of those Dude, outfits. The man loves some silk. And he, honestly, he looked comfortable <laughs> so, as fuck this whole dude, movie. Dude, like, the best fit was obviously the one in Rio. He's wearing, He looked like a damn genie. He looked like it was Sinbad. amazing. <laughs> Sinbad. And he was wearing sunglasses at night. Like he pulled up. <laughs> Like in that thing, and he had the sunglasses on. In like, I feel like his windows were tinted as well. Yeah, no, like we have to talk about how Dante Reyes was an LGBTQ icon in this movie. Oh yeah, man was flamboyant as fuck, <laughs> yes. painting his nails, wearing a lot of rings, sometimes looking like Loved a straight it. out genie, uh, purpled up for no reason. All the fits were fire. Matching every single, his car, every single fit was it. fire for no reason. Yeah, <laughs> and he'd be throwing in little like shit, like he'd be throwing in little one liners and stuff that were. Pretty funny, like and it's like yeah. whatever. Into like, I, there's one line later on in the movie that just killed me because like something emotional happens, and then he's just like, "Ooh, like looks like you're not gonna be <laughs> yes. at the barbecue." Like it's just like it's, yeah. fucking hilarious. Right. Like I'm all the way back. Like I went from like oh to like okay, that's hilarious. and I was just laughing. Like, Every scene he was, was in so was gold. Was absolute gold. He was a treat oh, to see yeah. on screen at all times for no reason. Yeah. There was no reason for him to be this good in this movie. And I, th- I think because <laughs> no. I think they must have been a conscious choice to be like, you know what, for our last villain, last villain, quote unquote, it's like, we've tried everything. We've done like the tech genius. We've done like the cool, you know, like I think um, Charlize Theron's uh, Cypher was a very good villain. Right. They've done all kinds of villains, right? But I think this time they're like, fuck it, let's just do like a Joker kind of variant. Just do somebody that's crazy and just have some fun with it and like to where they're not even taken seriously because it's like, 
if you try to do the serious villain again, we've seen it before. Like, so mm-hmm. just do something a little different. I think that was, and I think that was a good choice. Like, well, it's it also the good more, balance between fun. Vin Diesel's Dominic uh, Toretto's so- stoicism, mm-hmm. and and then you get Jason Momoa's just just fucking chewing up scenery in the best way possible in every scene he's fucking in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just cracking jokes the whole time. He's just singing, he's dancing, he's doing all kinds of nonsense. Like, he's talking to fuck, he's having tea parties with corpses, which was, was fucking that ludicrous. Was, that was, kind that of was insanity. That, that was so dark. That was so surprisingly like, dark in this movie. Yeah, it was kind of, it was off brand. Yeah, like, I, that threw me off too dark. hella. And they they like they try to get away with it. Like I, there's like one line where they sh- they open up his file and it's like, oh yeah, he had he had like a schizophrenic episodes in his youth or some shit. And like that's like that's their only way of, of talking about why he's he is this way, you know. But it's 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 ill. It, yeah, I think I could have done without that little scene because that was a little weak. Like it was a little too much. But other than that, like. You know, he was, he was, it was, great. it was nuts. It felt like I was playing like a, a Resident Evil game or something with that kind of shit. I don't know. That felt really, a little <laughs> bit. Yeah. <laughs> Just a straight psychopath. Um, but yeah, I did mm. like the fact, and this is part of where it's like, man, if someone that actually knew how to write a movie wrote this movie, this could have been so much cooler because the, the, they almost went a Riddler route with them where it's like he was getting in Vin Diesel's head. Like Dominic Toretto was fucking confused and lost <laughs> and scared. <laughs> Um, at points in this movie yeah. because of just you can't anticipate anything this man's going to do because he, he's chaotic neutral he'll do anything it doesn't matter um, and I like when they were playing with that and then they would play with that and then immediately throw it in the trash can like they had the whole TV right. things of him finding the information and seeing all the people or like when he stole everybody's like he stole every all of Charlize Theron's uh, henchmen's like families right. to get them on his mm-hmm. side like that was really interesting and then we that never saw anything great else scene. with that <laughs> and it's like yeah. Awesome scene. I want to see, do they see their family ever again? I guess they all die, so who fucking cares? But it's just like... A lot of this <laughs> movie was like, the things that just go nowhere. Yes. We'll, we'll talk yes. about more about that later. It's just things that happen and they go nowhere, but it's like, okay. Some of those I have issues with. Most of them, I'm just like, whatever. Don't, I, don't, I don't give a shit. It probably went somewhere that's not very interesting. <laughs> Did it happen to get a car on a road with some other cars? Right. And maybe some helicopters? Because that's all that really matters at the end of the day in a fast, fr- in a fast movie. Yeah, but. absolutely. I can't, we can't move on from Jason Momoa until I say his best line in the movie for me was when he calls Vin Diesel a butthole and throws his tooth Because <laughs> it's so unserious. My man cannot be serious about nothing. Yeah. That was insanity. And I love it. And I will say, uh, sl- 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 sort of jumping to the end, I, I kind of appreciate that um, seemingly he's sticking around. I don't know. I don't think he's going to be the villain for the whole all three movies. I don't think he is the end all be all to be honest. I think they will introduce another villain if not more multiple villains, maybe from the past or some shit. But I do like that he's they didn't just kill him off and he was a one and done. I'm I'm excited to see more yeah. of him in in the, in the next two movies. I mean, y- yes and no. Uh, cuz the 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 thought of him not getting killed off is because a very shitty thing happens in this movie. Uh. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, as soon as the ending happened, I knew I was like, Brian gonna be pissed. Brian gonna be so pissed at this. <laughs> I hate the Hobbit for that shit, bro. I, dude, okay, let's quickly just jump to the fact that this movie ends on the biggest cliffhanger. I literally wrote in my notes. I thought that was the end of the movie because the, but then it continued, and then the movie did end. So I was like, oh, that was really the ending. And I wrote, I haven't seen a cliffhanger like this since the second Hobbit movie. <laughs> mm-hmm. Very much Ludicrous. A cliffhanger. Yeah, ludicrous. I couldn't believe it. All right, let's talk about. Uh, the family. Let's talk about hashtag family. Let's because they're all pretty sparse throughout this movie. Uh, doing their own thing. It's 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 interesting what they've done with this. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's talk about let's talk about the Roman Tej Han and God. I I feel bad, but I don't know what her name is. <laughs> well, uh, um, uh, Ramsey. 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 Thank you. I don't. I didn't. Honestly, Devin, when you said Charlize Theron's character's name was Cipher, I had no <laughs> idea who the fuck that was either. So props to you for knowing who the fuck what her name was. I was calling her Charlize the whole. Movie. Yeah, I'm glad you have. We have this story in on our side. <laughs> it's okay. I just watched all of them very recently with uh with my girlfriend. She loves them. Yeah, I mean, there's parts of the stuff their their story that I liked, and other parts where I was just like. What are we doing? <laughs> a little bit. Well, I think it's like a classic one of those, like, you know, do your own thing for this movie and then right. the next movie they all come back together. I mean, it's a, yeah, it's an Infinity War end game. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's exactly. what they're yeah. I like that they're trying to hook up, get Han on Tinder. 
He's 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 thirty nine. Oh, he's man. trying to live his life. Man, man, man was getting a lot of clicks. I think Han's real pretty. I'm into it. I, I he see. is. <laughs> I like that he's got his long hair back. Like I think that's why oh, Fast God, Nine sucks because he had short hair. hair. Yeah. <laughs> he has a like daughter figure, but was the grandma ever in in any of the other Fast movies? Because she just randomly showed up, and I was like, she's gonna die immediately. And then she didn't. Everybody hated the grandma, <laughs> from what I heard. Like Dom's Dom's great grandma. Yeah. yeah. Like Rita Moreno, uh-huh. yeah, she. I think she's in nine. She's only in nine, and then this one, uh-huh. which fascinates me that she's not just she's not his grandma. She's his. She's the great grandma. So she's or no, so she's Dom's grandma. But age wise, I'm like, I don't. Does that line? Uh, up? I don't. She know. is in real life. That, that lady works. is 91 years old. So <laughs> holy crap! Yeah, but isn't Vin Diesel like 50 something? Two. That's two. I that's mean, two generations right there. I yeah. guess. I guess. 91 that, is that really work, fucking old. What do you want to be? 120. I guess that works. <laughs> Yeah. I just I don't know how old Dominic Toretto is. Is he is he supposed to be thirty five or fifty five? I don't mind, know. He's still thirty five. <laughs> he's definitely yeah fifty at this point. Every movie he's got a few more. They, they put a little bit more makeup on him. <laughs> That's okay. I like the tiny Tej, the little ludicrous car. I thought mm-hmm. that was kind of funny. Um, but yeah, I just I guess I I found their story the least interesting out of everything in this movie. It was very much a side but quest. It had, uh, it's had some of the best comedy though. Yeah. As usual, like Roman, it did. Roman is there for the the the, the jokes, man, and he delivered. Yeah, that's as like when I watch a fast movie, I just want to see a few cars do crazy things. I want right. to see Vin Diesel do something really crazy that like makes no sense. Talk about family, and I want to see Roman <laughs> make some dumb jokes <laughs> about yeah. people's foreheads or like you know someone's <laughs> blackness or something. And like some money jokes, just Tyrese, give me that every time. Tyrese has slept on as no. comedian for sure. I mean, it's great. Yeah. yeah. But I will say, this was the first time, this movie, where I was like, damn, these motherfuckers all look just tired. They all just look so <laughs> weathered in this movie and old. And I was like, damn, this really is number 10, isn't it? I mean, it really doesn't help that they're literally showing clips from five where they were, you know, 10 yeah. years younger. And then showing pictures with... <laughs> Can we talk about those pictures from the beginning of the movie where it's all the pictures of scenes from the other movies? And it's like, who the oh. fuck was taking those pictures? I <laughs> fucking hate that shit. I hate that in any movie. One is literally a scene of Vin Diesel in a car with another girl. You telling me grandma was hanging off the side of that car taking yes. pictures for her scrapbook? Yes. What is happening? Or like one from like the cabin they were in at the beginning of nine where like there's nobody yeah. else around. It was just like literally a shot from that movie. <laughs> if y'all don't like, Photoshop yeah, some fake pictures or something, that was so dude, lazy. No, man. Dude. This is fast. This is fast <laughs> oh. franchise. They're not putting that much thought into it. Like, uh, just go sad. with it. Go with it. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> um and this is one thing that I think they could have cut out of the movie because it was dumb and it didn't do anything was when Han just gets like a micro dose and gets high for like 30 seconds and then nothing ever happens from yeah, that, that for the rest weird. of the movie. You, I was like, there. why is this in there this? There is a version of the movie where there was at least a 10 minute scene of something, him doing something right. crazy. <laughs> uh, that they just cut it completely. That whole bit with Pete Davidson was, was funny. That no, was really good. I disagree. No, Ruined I'm, the movie. I'm sick of it. Honestly, you the best like part it? of that was when he got punched in the yes, face though. I agree. <laughs> oh. As soon as I saw Pete Davidson, I audibly groaned in the movie theaters. I said, ugh. Yep. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I liked it. He's like, you know, when they're, when they're bumping stuff around, he's like, you guys are doing dozens of dollars of damage. Like, <laughs> that was, I will say, that was funny. a funny line. That was good. That was a good I'm line. I'm sure he probably got to write his own lines, thank God. He but, had some good lines. Yeah. yeah. That was I fun. just, P. Yeah. Davidson, I don't, I don't need him in my movies right now. He's a little no, oversaturated. Over yeah. <laughs> I mean, I agree, but, you know, just like MCU, is, is there anybody that's not going to be in a fast movie? At, at that's fair. Movie that's fair enough. So. Yeah, we'll we'll probably talk about the the amount of cameos and people that show up in this movie, starting with Pete Davidson, obviously. But like Jesus Christ, this family, this needs to get smaller. There's uh, <laughs> <laughs> not enough sits at the, at the yeah at the barbecue. <laughs> Their whole crew ends up. We we get back to Jason Statham. He shows up, and uh, him and Han have a tiny bit of a standoff, fight, and then they end up just teaming up. But <laughs> the only thing I have to say about this was <laughs> that made me laugh was Jason Statham's. He he like kills a guy that's about to shoot Han or some shit. And he goes, now we're even. And I'm like, bro, <laughs> you killed him. We are not even. You killed him. I don't think that. Nothing you can do. I don't care if you saved his life or like a dude that might have killed him. You blew him up in a car and killed him. Ugh. We are not even. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, that I mean, was that nice. Was the- <laughs> 
<laughs> that is true. It was like, wait, I was like, wait, what did I say that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like, <laughs> we did try to attempt murder on him. On him at like, remember that time you you killed me for like a couple movies? Yeah, okay. <laughs> See, it's only about a time. Like Jason Momoa is going to be on their side at some point. Like every villain becomes oh. part of the family at some point. I don't know. That so, man's got to right? die. Which that's another another how I talk about Dragon Ball Z and how this is just anime. Is he is he's Goku? He's Goku in so many ways, and Dom Toretto just manages to be so cool and awesome and has so many coronas that everyone becomes his friend at some point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Let's talk about what, uh, at least for me, is the best fight and the best like character pieces that's together. It's the Letty and, and uh, I guess, Cypher stuff. That fight was fucking brutal, and I loved it. That is the best fight for me, personally, yes. is when... <laughs> She, Charlie's like, how much time do we have? Or, or, or she asked uh, Charlie's Theron's character how much time we have. She's like, we have four minutes. And she's like, ah, that's enough time. And she just fucking <laughs> spears her through a glass window. And hand. they just hit, they hit like the med bay like so fucking hard, dude. There was <laughs> like, so God. much broken glass everywhere. Just broken so glass everywhere. In there. Yeah, there, I, I loved all that shit. That shit was great. I have nothing else to say other than that because they, they're nothing else happened. Once again, with they were just doing a side quest that just didn't matter. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that that the like whole facility just took me out of the movie. That was like maybe the only thing that took me out because that's it's such a different thing. It was like a, it was like a James Bond level yes, of ludicrous. Like, exactly when like, it so... when it popped up and said Antarctica. <laughs> like the like the last place you know they've always been in kind of like abandoned warehouses and stuff and like even Fast Nine they're like in an abandoned like you know silo or something. But this time it's like the walls are like rock and they move out what? like some sci fi almost. Oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah like they're in a fucking yeah. Jedi temple. I was like, well, where yeah, the fuck are yeah. you putting this woman? And then like. <laughs> And like the scene where like they introduced uh, Thad Castle and you know they're just completely Thad CGI. And it's like it's like the Avengers Council that votes on stuff. It's like what the like what these movies have come so far from where they used to it's, be. But it was honestly nuts. like it was cool. But it was like uh, yeah, was jarring. But just the idea that Michelle Rodriguez characters opens the top of that fucking sh- like vent. In Antarctica, wearing nothing but a tank top. Like, she would be frozen solid. <laughs> <Immediately. Yeah. laughs> like, and she's just up there calm and cool, like, oh, shit. And then close. I'm like, no, yeah. that is not the reaction you she would have. All the way back down. I, I say, you're talking about negative degrees at Fahrenheit. Like, it's it's, yeah. it's worse than <laughs> Michigan. You know what I mean? Something like that. Like, so also, like, she said they have four minutes. It absolutely took her four, more than four minutes to kick Cypher's ass oh, yeah. and climb up that tube and all the way back down. And, and the people, the, the whole time, they're like, <laughs> yeah, they're going to be around the corner any minute. And then they just never came the people are just knocked out the whole time oh god but that yeah. was comedic it was, gold it was cool that that editing where they put it the was. Antarctica right over that as soon as she opened it <laughs> that so. was just ah there's just some things in this movie that are so tight and that was tight the editing yeah. I feel like was really tight when it came to like whoever oh cut god. this film uh, that was good oh fantastic yeah, yeah absolutely well since we're talking about them Devin led into fucking I like how you called him Thad Castle because I was just calling him Jack Reacher the whole movie because <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember his actual name is Alan Richson he's the He's the new head of whatever the fu- the agency. They don't yeah. even have an actual name. It don't matter. Just vague military guys. That can yeah. sometimes be good, sometimes sometimes be bad. Yeah. Um, he had one of the best lines. And it was like a weird meta moment of the whole franchise. Like, uh, your girlfriend was talking about this before we recorded. I was like, where he just says, it's like a cult with cars. Yeah. And that's, it's perfect. It's perfect. So, and then he's talking about yeah. how, like, they don't even obey the laws of gravity yeah. or they, physics and shit like if that. If it breaks the laws of gravity and God, they've done it twice. Yeah. Once again. <laughs> it's like, so it got, good. They got too meta. It was just too fucking meta. Like, like these like, are the kind of lines that I watch fast for, like, fast movies for. Like, oh, yeah. It was so Oh, great. it was funny. Yeah, that could, that dude got even bigger than he was in Blue Mountain Dude, State, and I don't think he does leg day though because when he was wearing those like tight jeans walking around Brazil, <laughs> I was like, this guy is very top heavy. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, that's the one thing about the Rock. The Rock does not skip leg day. That oh, man, man is just a pretty intense big leg from head day. to toe. Yeah, the, the yeah. Roy's didn't hit that man's thighs for some reason. <laughs> well he's doing film he he didn't need film muscles they don't show his legs ever it's always from the waist up anyways <laughs> but i did like one twist so we, I, one of you i don't remember who was saying how vin diesel's like the best and he always gets even the bad guys on his side this was the first time it was a twist where we thought he was gonna be on their side and it turns out nope he is still he's a, a bad double guy. double agent uh, and i kind of appreciated that <laughs> mm-hmm. he he should he's a good bad guy i like i kind of like that he stayed a bad guy because yeah yeah, me too. Especially because 
I'm not. I I felt better about it because his flip to being a good guy all of a sudden was so sudden. quick, and I was like, that was kind of bad. And then I was like, oh, okay, that's that's on purpose. Okay, I'm a little. I was they a were little fighting. <laughs> he gave him a gun. He was like, hey man, I'm gonna help you for the rest of forever now. And I was like, huh? <laughs> that was so weird. You hated this yeah. man literally 20 seconds ago. Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh lord. Yeah, we'll see how what his fate. Oh, is he's gonna 100 die. They're gonna put him in the Gina Carano way yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah absolutely Ooh. i'm pretty sure the only reason he exists because gina carano doesn't like i hope he right. fights one person in particular we'll see well yeah i mean I, me too i know i think we all know who we're talking yes. about yeah <laughs> that's 100 percent gonna happen i don't think that's a spoiler anyway <laughs> yeah two jacked up muscle heads yeah <laughs> let's stick with this little thing uh yeah brie larson's also in this movie cool uh she, <laughs> Ooh, you know. when i tell you homegirl gave us a Nothing. She <laughs> gave us not, and I kind of felt like she wasn't going to, based on what we saw in the trailer, and that's really unfortunate because she's not really catching right. a break recently either. Uh, after right. uh, her her blunder of uh, a Marvel, so Captain Marvel, uh, mm-hmm. which hopefully can be saved with this most recent movie that's coming up. But fuck, yeah. she, you could have deleted her from this movie and it would have changed literally nothing. She added nothing to this movie. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> and I hate that. It was just to get some names in there, man. And she, Honestly, somehow she had the gut, the whole God's eye in like her pocket, in a <laughs> in like a pocket watch or something like a a mirror. Honestly, it's just to extend the family because she's most or nobody's daughter. We're just we're just trying to create new relatives for everyone. Everybody has such an extensive family in this world. Like <laughs> it's so funny. Nobody's an only child. <laughs> Nobody has no kids. Honestly. If the last movie's not called Fast Family, I'm gonna be upset. <laughs> like, like it should be called that. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, I yeah, I have nothing else to say about Brie Larson's character. There is nothing She's, else to say. She'll be back. There's, there's nothing much to say. Also, about. remember the, the Paul Walker lookalike guy that they brought in, who's like also in the agency or the CIA or something. He was in Rome, and then he just was never in anything again. Like, oh yeah, the- fucking Clint Eastwood's son is back in this one. He was not. He was in last time. I think we saw him was in eight, and uh, he's just in this. Dude, yeah, he's in it for about five minutes, and then you just completely forget that he's there, and, it, and the movie just rolls on without. He him. seemed like he's gonna be an integral <laughs> like, part once they did the Rome dead. thing. Yeah, he's definitely alive still, but he, he's he, just gone. He's just gone. Like it's, it's almost like they forgot to keep him, like to keep him <laughs> as a role. In the movie. I'm telling you, the family's too big, guys. They're forgetting the relatives I mean, now. They, they found oh, another man. white man with a beard uh, to replace him when they found a military cop man. So they're like, okay, we yeah, don't need this yeah. white man anymore. <laughs> we, we can put him back into the shelf. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's so funny. Speaking of big uh, white military guys, let's talk about John Cena's completely new character from the last movie because they are very different he's just a different person yeah. but he's a better person in the sense that he's yeah. just John Cena they made him John Cena because <laughs> they knew that it was really stupid to catch John Cena and not use his humor they know John Cena is very charismatic right. and has a really good presence when he's funny so why they make him the most stoic mm. fucking stick up his ass human being and fast I think that's one of the worst parts about Fast 9 is making him just a stick up his ass human being for no reason yeah um, a he's whole just, villain yeah. uh, <laughs> and now yeah. he's a nice guy in some board shorts just randomly I just, it's so funny. It's like going from nine to 10. It's like, these are just not the same person, but whatever. We roll with it. Um, I, I really enjoyed him in this movie. Um, mm-hmm. I liked his introduction. Obviously, um, he goes to save Mia, who is his sister, which I was like, I don't think they've ever had a scene together. So yeah. that's kind of fun that they got to meet once and they're siblings, I guess. And save his nephew. And, like, remember they had the whole plan because, like, Dom knew that, like, people would come for the son or whatever. So you have, like, a contingency plan, right? Right. Like they knew like Cypher showed up at their house like a few nights ago. And then him and Mia are just chilling at the house playing video games. Like yep. when the agency comes for them, like, what are you doing? Yeah. Everyone knows where you live. Like, why do you not have yeah. a secret location for when situation goes down? That house has been blown up <laughs> so four <laughs> times. Like, <laughs> but it was also that John Cena could throw a person through the floor, which is pretty sweet. Pretty sick. Yo, so. he did they they did the thing. I love it when they do this. They do this with the rock in one of the other movies. He did his wrestling finishing move. <laughs> That is John Cena's wrestling finishing move. He did it, and it was the funniest yeah, shit in the fucking world. Awesome. <laughs> it was so awesome. So just speaking of that scene, and then seeing him do all of that. So, another thing where it's like, I gotta really, the suspension of disbelief in this movie is so fucking ridiculous, that it's really hard to keep immersed <laughs> sometimes. These people are in military-grade gear. Why does punching people in their face, their Kevlar <laughs> mask, 
knock them out, kill them a lot of times. I never understand that. Because Mia's over there throwing hands and fucking wrecking people in full Yo, military guard. Was doing pretty good too. I told you, everyone's a kung fu master. And then they do this crazy thing where they're showing, you know, John Cena knock people through walls and taking them through fours. And then one of the guys takes Mia and then they take her over his head and they throw her and then she squeaks on the couch. She just goes, meek. And I was like, was that supposed to be funny? I'm not sure if that was supposed to be a joke. Because she just lands on the couch and it's like, ugh. And it's like, I love well, she, it. It's... She's not hurt. Everyone else is really hurt because they, you know, they went through ground yeah. and shit. She just goes, "Oh, mm. nap, nap time. Okay, nice. I'm better now." Right. What the fuck is happening? <laughs> they, it's because they all have the power of family. I Ryan. hate this movie. It's family man. on their mm-hmm. side. It's so stupid. Man. You know yep. they would have thrown Cena... her against the table or some shit, not on a couch. John Cena punches a man through a wall in this movie, <laughs> and it's amazing. Yes. <laughs> Everyone's got iron hands somehow. Again, oh, just remember so what we're here for. Don't don't be here for absolutely else. <laughs> absolutely. Let's continue with John Cena and and Lil B as they like to call the uh, Dom's son in this movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, they fly out of a plane on a little a, a little uh, what is a canoe a with wings? It was a kayak. <laughs> so yeah, I knew that was going to be something. I just didn't know exactly what that it's was. So that was funny. a wild thing as well. They just like you know. so and they don't even try to explain it. They don't even try to explain where it comes no. from, why he has it. Like I'm pretty sure passenger planes don't have hangers that open like that, but <laughs> no but it's okay. Way. But you know why? It's because this is where they had a cameo. The flight attendant was on their side, apparently. But that is also played by Paul Walker's real life daughter, Meadow Walker. Oh. So she, her first ever appearance in the franchise. That's cool. So that's why. That's why. That's very cool. But yeah, they, uh, it's ludicrous. And then <laughs> that's not where it ends, because then they get uh, John Cena's fucking Mad Max car. <laughs> oh my god! Fucking sick. This just became yeah. This this became a. Uh... Twisted, <laughs> twisted metal drive. Look no say. further. Do not go to Peacock. Yeah, you can just come to the Fast franchise. I'm, and get I'm pretty your death sure. Slash. I, I was driving that in uh, Borderlands too. Like I'm pretty sure that was the the vehicle that I was driving. <laughs> what the fuck was that thing? Mm-hmm. Once oh again, another God. person just randomly like a super genius for no reason. Uh, <laughs> Everyone is. And like somehow they made it not a real weapon. Like it was like a tank. It, it was like a bazooka. But right. also a tank sh- cannon, but it's not really either. Like it was very, I don't know, but it, it was still sick though. Like all I'm saying is, John Cena just made his nephew kill people. <laughs> <laughs> that little boy just killed. And at people. no point was he scared of it either. That he was ready. He was no, ready and willing. That kid <laughs> is gonna be a serial killer when he grows up. It could also fire oh forwards and backwards. I'm pretty sure at one point it fired backwards, yeah. and it also fired forwards. Yeah. It. Don't think about it too much, it doesn't make, but it, I mean, no. it, it was sick. It, it did show that he could turn it around. The biggest thing about it is if you're shooting tank rounds uh, in a car, it would knock your car way backwards. I don't care how much horsepower you get. <laughs> uh, so once again, physics don't matter at all in this for no reason. Oh my God, it would be so heavy. It would be yeah. so heavy. If anything, it probably would have ripped the entire skin off of the car if he shot one, one round. But <laughs> <laughs> but nah, you just, just crank it real quick. <laughs> hand crank it he cranks it by hand that right. doesn't make any sense either what the fuck <laughs> so weird oh the coolest car uh yeah and then they kill him i couldn't believe they killed him i could i was <laughs> he's like he's not Whoa. dead he was just he's introduced in the last movie what this this is up here no this is up here with superman's dad's death um and fucking yes. man of steel <laughs> so where it was so unnecessary so and so fucking dumb. stupid there's so many other things you could have done to give him more yes. time but instead he decides to want to be a random martyr because i don't want to be yes. in your shadow anymore yes. what's the best way to be out of a shadow don't exist there is no shadow when you don't <laughs> exist anymore <laughs> just be dead there's no shadow in the grave <laughs> <laughs> right, like, oh no, there's like five henchman cars approaching. Dom's never dealt with that before, so right. I, I really got to take one for the team here. It's like, Dom Toretto can definitely get around those five cars. But like, yeah. I definitely thought he was going to like fire at them and like just blow them out of the way, but he shoots it at the ground, <laughs> leapfrogs <laughs> over the road, and just crashes. <laughs> it's it's like, so dumb. <laughs> I think that shows you how far we've come with fast franchise where oh. you don't you don't really think about that part. You're like, oh no, he's about to die. And like you don't really think about how <laughs> ridiculous his death is the whole time. You're just thinking, oh like, my god. No, that's a normal thing for Fast and Furious. Like for this this right. tank car to <laughs> take out five other cars. But oh yeah, but I feel so like funny. we never really got good resolution because like at the end of nine, 
they don't. That's what I'm saying. The, Dom doesn't really apologize right. for being such a terrible, <laughs> terrible brother. And That's why then, I was so surprised. And then they don't even see really each other. do it here either. Yeah, because they don't see each other like they, hardly. They don't ever, ever. Do they have a scene together at all? And they do like a little bit on the radio, but like they they never, I don't, I feel like that's an unresolved thing that like I kind of want to yeah. see is like, you know, Dom really embrace. Because like they, they leave things so icy at the end of Fast 9, which makes no sense. But like, and then, you know, Dom never it's apologizes, so whatever. I just want, I want that to be resolved it's okay. in a better way. And they it, really didn't do that. It will be resolved because he didn't die. <laughs> what he did is as the flames engulfed him, he flexed them off. <laughs> the air, the steam of his body when he flexed made sure that he wasn't Dude, encapsulated. I hope so. I hope so, but I think I think why I think he might be why dead. would that be the one character who has ever died in this movie? Why would that no, be the one? We saw Han die. die. Because... We saw Han super die and that man came back. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think I think because like talking about living in someone's shadow, John Cena, you know, has always been in somebody else's shadow, and I think they had to clear some budget for the next one. <laughs> I think so. So. This man costs a lot of money now. Uh, Maybe. I think he might Maybe they they could only co- they could only pay for one wrestler to be in the movie. <laughs> yeah, I think he might not actually be back, and I, I, I hope think, I, hope he I will. think Devin's right. I, I would hope so know. too, but at first I was like, "Oh, he's fine," and then the whole shit exploded. I was like, "Oh no, I, he's <laughs> they, gone." They showed a lot. He's eviscerated. They showed a lot of that death. I was like, "Oh." <laughs> Thing is, oh, if they was... want to bring him back, they absolutely can. But yeah, oh yeah, you know, we'll talk about the ridiculous death no going back will, in, the, no in a bit. But I, if if he yeah, just walked out of that like <laughs> that inferno, no one would bat him out. I'm so fucking pissed at it that. Was it was so, so dumb and so so useless. <laughs> Uh, it was yeah it was everyone's like uncle jacob no yeah so the, i was like sad and then immediately after that over the radios i just love how they can talk shit to each other on the radios but then dante's just like oh no because he's yeah. he's gonna miss the barbecue <laughs> and it was just like that is hilarious like that is just oh so God. funny because so like good. you know in that moment jason momoa is all of us like you know he's oh, just yeah. trolling the movie to its face it's like so like the character we've spent literally the least amount of time with. They're like, this is the emotional death we get. Yeah. <laughs> Not like Roman literally. or Ludacris or <laughs> right. just anyone else. Like, yeah, John, I, I literally uh, felt nothing. I wasn't even, I was more just frustrated at the, the why they did it. But I don't, I don't want, like, here's the thing. I don't want anybody to die. I want everybody to be Me there. Me either. The, I yeah, want the yeah. table, I want those mismatched of tables to be there in the last movie and it's every <laughs> single person that has ever been there. I want that table to go down the block <laughs> of family. Yes. John Cena yes. would have great jokes to make fun of Tyrese about. Like, it would have been great. Right? Yeah. yeah. We'll see. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> All right, let's quickly talk about someone who we haven't talked about this whole fucking movie is Dom Toretto. Because, you know, he's he's also in this movie, I guess. He's also doing his, his thing. The story's <laughs> boring as hell, bro. He's just, you know, honestly, like, I, other than the obvious sadness of Paul Walker being dead in real life, this franchise really suffers from him and Vin Diesel's character not being together all yes. the time. Like, it's like Vin Diesel needs someone to talk to a lot of the time. <laughs> Him by himself is just not as interesting sometimes. Uh, he, yeah, yeah, he's kind of he's kind of a, a one note character, and it's pretty boring and it's pretty flat. Especially now that he's getting older, it feels even worse. He actually has old man fucking sayings like, uh, "Look what they tell you. <laughs> I told you they never listen." Like, what? Shut up, Grandpa. Yeah. Fucking who cares? Like, <laughs> that's another reason why I love this movie is because Dom Toretto was not in a lot a lot of it. And that was that was. One That's of the best fair. Parts of it. Like, I did like the return to Rio, obviously, because we're talking about Fast Five stuff. I like mm-hmm. that. The fucking gun standoff with him and Dante and all the people was fucking yeah, hilarious. Was Ridiculous imagery, but I loved it. The race it. was not mm-hmm. n- necessary at all. That was really nothing. You know, they got a shoehorn a yeah. race in there somehow, though. Gotta show some booties, some titties. <laughs> and, and you some also racing. knew that, like, yeah. when he's like, oh, you gotta, you gotta save one of them. Who are you gonna pick? It's like, we're clearly gonna pick. The not right. <laughs> we're not gonna not pick homeboy over here. Not homeboy. Okay. Yeah. So I did notice <laughs> Don Toretto only saves women. He does not save men. <laughs> and it was really, really apparent in this movie because there was two separate times where there was a woman in trouble and a man in trouble. And you said, fuck that man. And I, I know he's probably got some pretty archaic views. He's a pretty machismo ass man. But oh, <laughs> what the fuck? He's 100 percent a Republican. <laughs> that sure. wasn't just a woman. That was family. Remember, we find out later that that was family. But then who gives a fuck about Brie Larson? Let her get shot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I didn't think about the South movie like. Dom, he's like, I did like the idea that he has to choose, but I was also like, wasn't Jason Momoa's character behind you? Why don't you just break 
just hit the brakes and crash yeah. into Jason Momoa's car. And yeah. then it's done. We're Once done. Again, it's over. It makes too much sense. I can't do that. <laughs> I thought about that. And the fact that he knew, okay, I'm going to hit her car so that she goes off sideways and it'll knock off the exact location of the bomb where I know it is off He's of her car yep. to blow up behind, behind her. I mean, whatever. But they, hey, they got a race in there. It was good. It yeah. was just a straightaway, though. There was no, like, you know. No well, yeah. They didn't have time to. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> he, he immediately went for the kill. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Obviously, uh, the, yeah, it's revealed that what's her name, uh, Daniela Melchior. I don't know if that's pronounced right. She was she's been making the rounds. She's she's doing. She was in the Suicide Squad. She was in Guardians Three recently, and now she's in this. She's been doing some shit. She is uh, Dom's uh, baby mama, who is now dead. Elena sister. Yeah. yeah. So she's technically the 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 auntie to his son, mm-hmm. which again I just just in, in, expand the family. I love it. Expand the family. Oh, Let's boy. keep going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's fine. That's all the big stuff. Uh, I just have a couple of the like the the sequences, which I just wanted to talk about how this opening of this movie is the biggest uh promotion for Rocket League I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, with that rolling ball bomb thing. <laughs> oh my god, that whole the whole room. <laughs> sequence was just th- that ball was just rolling downhill for a good four miles it was, was so like, frustrating every single time they thought they stopped it and then it starts moving again i was like god damn like, it you'd see it rolling somewhere you're like oh well it's just gonna kind of you know stop there and then it would just be rolling again like the next it was just cut and it's just oh. rolling downhill again oh and then yeah. it caught fire at one point awesome. it catches fire i love the ending uh how it's resolved was he jumps off like a bridge hits yeah. a construction crane that pinwheels and knocks the ball into the water <laughs> and like and i think the whole movie and that's the thing is like you know because the fast movies are so fun nothing really like emo- like deep moments like things that are supposed to right. hit your heart don't really hit because it like, don't matter they're like dang rome is just destroyed and it's like you literally <laughs> saved the vatican just now they blew up one bridge and you caused right. a few fires and like there, there's like those shots where he's talking to um helen Mirren's character and there's like a, a, a bit of smoke over rome it's like Rome right. falls. So did the world. It's like, dude, nobody died. Like, not a single no, person also, here died. What? And that makes him enemy number one. That's pretty weird. Also, how did Ellen, yeah. uh, Ellen Mirren get all the way to Rome same day that they got there? I don't know. She was just hanging out there. Was she just already there? Yeah. Like, yeah, was she already there? Or, like, did she did she get, like, some kind of intel? How did she get there as fast as they hey, did? Hey, how did Dom and um, Letty catch up to them in Rome when they were already, like, a day or two behind? It's It doesn't matter. Don't think yeah, about these planes are fast. Just... I don't know. That shit crazy. I, I forgot <laughs> Helen Mirren's also in this movie for thirty yeah. seconds, uh, talking to Vin Diesel on a green screen. Yeah. Or whatever. <laughs> to, to hold his well, face. She's gonna have a ne- big part of the next one because Jason Statham said some of it about they were coming after her, and he and he's just like, oh, time or, to dig some graves. They might just delete any part of that and just move on, like they're done with some other things. <laughs> in this movie. They might. They might. <laughs> That's actually Jason Statham's uh, solo spinoff. That's uh, it's actually gonna be fast be. X point five. It could be. <laughs> it's the Statham story. Wait, point eight. Absolutely, the fuck not. <laughs> yes, J- more Jason Statham, please. <laughs> Last couple bits for me. Uh, I love seeing Dom. Uh, one hand lift a car up on that real bridge at the end. He just bicep curls a car to turn off. Because <laughs> that's something that a human can do. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was Without great. Without catching a hernia. Okay, uh, sure. <laughs> he he uses the, the door like a shield, Captain America style. Mm-hmm. One of the best gags in the movie, audio wise. So it's in Jason Momoa is asking Brie Larson or one of them if they like like ballet, and he's like, "You seem more like a Swan Lake person or whatever." And then an orchestral version of Swan Lake plays in the background. <laughs> I was laughing. I was fucking dying, that, that man. Was something I couldn't do it. <laughs> Oh my god! He was great. I love. I loved Jason. He was Lowe. fantastic. You, gotta, you just he gotta was, go with it. This is like, a movie I might yeah, rewatch absolutely. solely for him. I really. I was. It was yeah. infectious every time he was on screen. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, watching Little B fly, jump from car to car, Superman style was hilarious. To, to entrust that, that in real life, that child would have just died, and that would have been <laughs> end of it. Like, why would you think that was an idea <laughs> that was gonna work? Uh, oh god. Um. Also, yeah. we do have to talk about. Um, my man fucking kick flipping down the goddamn uh, Hoover Hoover Dam, um, oh. and then pressing <laughs> his Nas, which is the flammable. Nas. While flames are firing him, that would not make you go faster. <laughs> what it would do is make you explode. They would have all been dead immediately. <laughs> that made no fucking sense. Nah, Brian, he hit the boost. He got full boost. <laughs> the boost. And, and it even shows good. the flames go through the ignition of everything, which would have also ignited the rest of the vehicle. Every, they should have died. Every fast movie has to have a, sh- a shot of going through the engine of the Nas yes, activating the I loved it. Every fast well, they should have shown that and then immediately show the car pop. 
Because <laughs> that makes no <laughs> fucking sense while you were out running fire. What is happening here? I mean, Brian, who knows? They might not have died by fire this movie, but it ends. They might die by water. They might all drown because it ends on a cliffhanger where he's looking at his son like, we're fucked. But obviously, no. how, no how, how no can chance, they get no out chance, of this? No how are they going to get out of this one? Oh, I'm like, sure they'll find a way. Brie Larson. But no, like, <laughs> I think of all the things that have been done in Fast Movie, I think driving down a dam is not that unrealistic. It's not. That's the craziest it's really part. Not. I feel like they do kind of curve and you can do it. Like, of all the things they've done, it's like, yeah, that's like, you know, I'll go with that. Like, right. Yeah, no, sure. Oh. You know how probably front heavy that man's vehicle is. He's driving a fucking old school <laughs> car. Like, that shit's definitely flipping directly <laughs> over and dude. tumbling down. Wow. How many Dodge ch- Challengers or Chargers or whatever it is, how many are left in the world after Dom <laughs> right. gets them? How many like, has he gone he's through? He's the reason they, they discontinued them. I mean, how many movies uh, have there been? He's So he's gone through at least 10. At least and 10. like they are fucking totaled by the end. Like and he, <laughs> after that, after that thing in Rome, he smacked that his car smacked the wall so hard he would have been splattered. Like he would have been pancaked, <laughs> just a human meatball. But like <laughs> that, it like hit the car so hard. I was like, oh god! And then he just keeps driving. He just drives away. Totally fine. He's totally yeah, fine. That shit exploding on impact. There's no keep driving from that. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Dom just man. Dom loves wrecking a car on oh. every mission. He loves it. Yeah, he loves. He's this got one. a lot of money. For a man who loves cars, he really loves to wreck them, you know? Listen, man. Mm-hmm. I think he'd have a little more respect. You can respect. get your Dodge Charger for like 30K. <laughs> it's all good. Go get you another. <laughs> <laughs> Let's quickly talk about the two end credit slash mid credit, whatever oh. quote, scenes. Starting with the first one. She back. She's back, Dude, guys. Getting everybody. Nobody's ever dead. She's back. <laughs> dead. Nobody's ever dead. Hey, she's got some time. She's not shooting Wonder Woman anymore. Yo. <laughs> like, Yo. She's just making cameos out the wazoo this year. Uh, and, and to the point where this one, she didn't even get a line. They just show her pop up at a submarine. It, it might not even be her. It could be AI. <laughs> I'm not even sure. <laughs> Dude, I can't, wait to, I can't wait to hear the story of how she survived. Oh, me too. That's the only thing. I was like, how is a big balloon, a giant bubble? Like, what I mean, is going to explain? How, fa- how fast were they going? She jumped off of a car going like, I don't know, 70? I mean, no, they were attached to a jet plane that was taking off down a runway. No, no, no. But she was on the car. She was on one of the cars on the side. She wasn't on the jet. Yeah, but they were, weren't they stuck on, they were attached to the plane via a harpoon. Yeah, they were. So they're going as fast (laughs) as that jet plane was. And she flew off into an abyss. (laughs) You mean a balloon that was perfectly placed? (laughs) Nah, I, th- I, I just can't wait. Of all the things people wait. have survived, I think you could just chalk that off to like she just kind of drops and rolls. And That's and why she- John Cena's not <laughs> dead, bro. There's no way. If God I mean- lives, she, he can't. he can't be dead. I love I it. I refuse. It's so funny. And yeah. also, I'm like, why didn't she talk to Han? Maybe because she thought he was dead too? Oh, Were they both dead at the same They're time like, thinking they yeah. weren't alive? <laughs> there's definitely a reason that she didn't talk to Han, for sure. There is not. Oh. To, it was to keep him safe. Yeah, I'm sure that's going to be the reason. Because they're, <laughs> because they're definitely going to get back together by the end of this franchise. They will, I hope they she's will just be... Wonder Woman. That's the explanation. <laughs> she was just, she's, she's just, just doing Wonder, Wonder Woman, Woman things. At this, point, at this yeah. point, I mean, are you going to complain? Do you uh, think they're going to have a scene where she swipes right on him on Tinder and that's how he knows that she's alive? <gasps> oh, that would be precious. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I would what the fucking fuck? hate that. I would hate that so much. Easy money tender. Let's oh, go, Lord. baby. That right, was, right. Didn't, didn't Roman say something to him? I was like, yeah, you'll get one every few days or so. And then he just instantly starts getting like, it's a match. It's a match. It's a match. Yeah. <laughs> Which, that makes no sense if it was matches because they just made he would the profile. Have to swipe. So he would have to swipe. That makes no fucking sense. <laughs> no, no. Those, gir- those girls were waiting for Hans it's, it's profile. Another one of those situations that pisses me off. Whenever they do something that has to do with like real life technology, they never actually like do the research they never know how on to how it. it works. It's the same when you have yeah. two people playing a one person game. That shit pisses me off so bad. It makes me so fucking <laughs> right, mad. Yeah. Hey, man. Hey, man. Oh. It is just. Don't don't think about it too hard. It's so oh, funny. Don't think about it's just it too so hard ever. easy. It's so easy to get that information. <laughs> you got PAs. You got people for this. Like, oh, God. <laughs> all right. And now, probably the biggest shocker, at least for me, of them all. I did not get the spoiled for me. I'm so happy I did it. Oh, I heard too. that this was me kind of going around, too. and I'm glad I avoided it. Yes. I one. I want to know how much they paid him. A lot. Two. <laughs> I want to know if he'll ever have a scene with Vin Diesel because no, always the rock not. is fucking. Definitely not, but that's back. okay. How much? 
how much Terra Mana do you think that Vin Diesel had to buy in order for The Rock to be cool <laughs> doing this situation? Like, like how, how much investment money do you think? <laughs> yeah, do you think he had to apologize? Like, give him an official apology? I don't apology? know. What if this whole thing was just an elaborate con? Like, everything. It's just the biggest PR oh, stunt we've okay, ever seen. I'm talking about him him and all that kind of shit over the past amazing. two years or anything like that. No, yes. I can tell you exactly what happened. Uh, Shazam and Black Adam did fucking terribly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the Rock's like, shit, I need money. I got no more franchises to ruin. The Rock was hoping for a good five-year oh. contract on, on Black Adam, and that didn't work out, so he didn't have anything else to do. <laughs> yeah. They paid oh, him whatever God. they were going to pay John Cena for the next one, <laughs> and... And then some. <laughs> so I just that that I, I honestly blew my fucking mind. I yeah. couldn't believe it. And they did such a I'm good job. I'm excited. Of like, they made him look smaller in that, like, because I was like, why are they focusing on this this one random guy? And I was like, wait a minute. And then because that, that did cross my mind earlier in the movie, I was like, this whole thing about is about uh, Jason Momoa's dad, and it's like, well, the Rock right. shot him, like, double tapped him, pretty. He nonchalant. shot him in the head like, twice. <laughs> and like, I was like, okay, so, but I guess because the Rock's out, whatever, we don't really care about that. But then when he's like. You like you know you pulled the trigger. I was like, no way. And then they they did they did a great job of making the rock look smaller in that outfit. But then, yeah. Oh, I'm so happy. And then like the way he he drew out that like you know he's like, well, I'm not hard to find. You some some bitch. bitch. <laughs> it's so <laughs> awesome. I knew. So awesome. I knew immediately. It was now him. I fucking I knew. can't wait for the next one. I knew immediately as soon as he popped up, and I was like, "That's the Rock. It's got to be the Rock." They wouldn't. They would have an after credit scene unless it was the Rock. <laughs> like, yeah. right, right. I was just like, I can't believe they did it. I cannot believe it. He is the perfect actor for this franchise, though. Like the fact that oh yeah, he like, is action movies. He's the uh, he's the next Arnold Schwarzenegger when it comes to action movies. Like, yeah, yes. And this movie's still allowed to be in China, oh. so. He has to get that money. I hope this time that they, I hope that he breaks his arm again just so he can do that, like flex it off again, flex the cast. I want to see him fight fucking Jack Reacher. I want to yeah. see him fight Jason Momoa. I'll, I want it oh. all. I want it he all. He can't fight Jason yes. Momoa. Put him He's in a too cage big match. For Jason Momoa. That's not going to be That's not be fair. <laughs> this time, last time he stiffed arm, he stiff armed a guy off a motorcycle. This time he's just going to stiff arm a car and like stop it dead in his <laughs> He's going to pull him just, out like, of the car while it's moving. He's going to reach right. out yeah. and just pull him out of the car. Mortal Kombat yeah. style. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. I can't, I can't, I can't wait. wait. Yeah. Like, we thought Chris Evans, like, holding a, uh, a helicopter was cool in, in Captain America. He's going to hold, like, a 747 or something. Like, <laughs> He's gonna... I can't wait. He's going to lift a tank off the ground. Oh, so. Of, of oh all the new God. characters that were introduced in this series, he is my favorite by far. Uh, yes. I, <laughs> I think this is exactly his realm. Uh, it, it just makes sense. Yeah. Yes. I, I, I hope, I, I just hope it, it's not too obvious that him and Vin Diesel were never in the same room. <laughs> <laughs> It'll make me mad because they got to say something. They have to, man. I need it. I need it to happen. They might. They might. I'm just hoping they I mean, drink some tequila and made, made amends. Hey, but if they don't, right. give, me, give me a little bit more Hobbs and Shaw like banter. I would, I would love that. Like a little bit more of a, nah. a reunion there. I don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> you got, you got the, the, the number haters. one Hobson Shaw fan over here. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a great movie. Oh, God. That is Fast X for me. I don't know if you guys have any final thoughts. Go check it out. It's fun. It's much better than nine. It's a, it's, it's a lot of fun. I mostly am upset that we're going to have to wait like two to three years for the fucking second I, part I needed to do a shit. Matrix situation where it's six months out. Like, I don't, we don't have time for this. If it's a cliffhanger, <laughs> don't even wait even a full year. <laughs> no, see, they're taking notes from Attack on Titan. They're going like, to release like the first 90 oh, minutes no. of the movie and then they'll leave like another hour. I would rather die for another time. than see a movie in that situation. <laughs> if, it's, if it's three parts, dude, I'm in. I mean, just don't, don't, this is the one thing that society doesn't want us to stop. Okay, just keep making them. Now it's the question: Is it Fast X two? Is it Fast Eleven? Like, what I, are hope they doing? I hope it's X two. I hope they do the Final Fantasy treatment and make it X two. That would be amazing. Fast Y. <laughs> <Watch this. Yes. laughs> it Let's ends see. with Fast Z. <laughs> Fastly. I hate it. I hate oh, it that's so, so good. That's, the that's so good. Or they just change it to quickly. Just go quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Speed. All right, listeners, that is enough of this family for the main topic. Still. Crack up and have cheers to your Coronas and your family and your barbecues. Oh, real quick tidbit. I will say, uh, Jackie was visiting for, for the week. Um, and so we had a family barbecue on the day we went. So we went and saw Fast X 
when we came home and had a barbecue, cracked some Coronas, and we played Mario Kart. <laughs> That's fantastic. We're, we're the we vibes were doing some just racing. absolutely immaculate. Like, <laughs> it was sure. incredible. It was a great day. <laughs> that That is fantastic. That's what, you know, Vin Diesel somewhere smiling. I think, like, that. <laughs> That's exactly what he wanted. All right. Listeners, that is it. Shall we now, guys, hop into our final segment of the week, which Let's we like to it. call Free For All Title Pending. This is a segment for listeners where we can kind of do whatever we want, talk about our day, talk about our life, recommend something, take a nap, fight. It is Free For All. Who would like to go first? I can go first. I can go. Nope. Fuck you. I'm going first. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I wasn't expecting you to, to say anything. You're shaking your head no. So I was like, there's no way he's going first. Uh, <laughs> so I have been I don't know for people that have been on the internet or on Twitter specifically there's been a lot of interesting clips going around um, specifically about a TV show that I didn't know still came on called The Good Doctor um, The Good Doctor is a show about a savant autistic man that has become a resident at a San Jose California uh, hospital and basically him struggling with being communicative and existing in a world full of normies while also being somehow the best doctor on fucking earth. So it's Grey's Anatomy for an autistic boy, essentially. <laughs> hmm. um, so seeing these clips, uh, people are randomly just roasting the shit out of this show about how awful and goofy and cringy it is, um, which is really oh. funny because this is like the seventh season that the show's been on. I'm about to say, and this has been on for yeah, a while. <laughs> and I remember like years ago when it first came out that people were recommending it to me, telling me how good it was. And it's really funny how things, like as time goes on, uh, kind of shifts and people are like oh man actually this shit sucks um so that's what the, the good doctor's getting that treatment right now so i was like you know what fuck it mm. i'll start watching it oh boy when i tell you this show is setting autistic people back about 50 years oh old. no <laughs> oh no they make my man a pure man baby uh <laughs> he oh, is annoying geez. and robotic and weird and awful and just not the experience of having autism i feel like for most of the community period right um it's a really and it's just one of those things where it's just like i don't know why tv can't seem to get neurodivergence right and like anything they don't seem to handle depression anxiety bipolar disorder you know mm. we're still always saying like this is the best anxiety attack to ever be shown on tv no it's fucking not they're just breathing heavy and seeing stars that's stupid shut up uh <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i don't know this show they use they also use like a kind of an archaic word and like or like term to talk about who he is as a person. You know, like Asperger's isn't technically a diagnosis anymore. That was basically saying like, I'm autistic, but I'm smarter than other people. Mm. People don't use that anymore. But then they said high functioning. Mm -hmm. And this movie, uh, this show came out in like 2017. So like, I don't think that was a word that was really used even in 2017. We kind of figured out that like calling someone low functioning is pretty ableist language and like not okay. Right. Um, so we don't use high functioning, low functioning. At most, you might use verbal and nonverbal when talking about autism in the spectrum. Yeah, this show is miserable, but I my eyes are, are glued to the TV because it just it's so frustrating oh, no. to watch this man literally do anything. Everything is a meltdown, mm. a breakdown, terrible, and it's I don't know. I'd love to see an autistic person Ooh. watch this and be like, give their real opinion on what this feels like to watch because right. it feels right. That is frustrating. It feels bad. Yikes. And as Yikes. far as I know, the last episode of the show came out in like uh, May first of this year. So I'm assuming the season just ended, oh. but the show's still going on. So I don't know if this Oof. new discourse is going mm. to potentially can this show or what's kind of going to happen with it. Right. It's probably getting more viewership than mm. I ever did in a long time because I didn't even know it still came on. But mm. I don't know if that negative discourse is going to put too many bad eyes on it to the point that it doesn't exist anymore. So, mm. Right. That's interesting. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like anytime you're making central plot, choice like you know like a something about a disability or whatever i feel like you should absolutely have people in the room that are that have that right like representation right. is so important but it's like just get the people that know it to do it i mean i mean yeah it's the same thing yeah, with any community right. yeah absolutely and like maybe they do i don't know but it seems like maybe not enough you know, maybe they're not listening to them enough if they do have that person in the room because right. it should it should take us some time to like understand how this person communicates and kind of like you know, get into the complexity of that instead of like, mm -hmm. just like, oh, they just have a lot of temper tantrums and stuff. Like yeah, that. It, it's right. it's rough. It's it's a rough watch so far. So I'm interested to see Damn. maybe it gets better. This is the first season that I've been watching. Maybe they get a little bit more complex with it. But so far, it's usually just a, a, a man either being a robot or being a baby. And those are the only two <laughs> things he's got going on. Jesus. And then everyone being really mean to him. Damn. <laughs> it's what happens. 
Dang. So don't watch this. It's, it's bad. I mean, show. it's, it's one of those show. things where it's like if you want to watch something that's so awful that it's funny, like it's entertaining bad. Right. Uh, go for it. It's not like boring right. bad. So uh, take that as you will. All right. Well. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Damn anyway. man. Yeah, Oscar. I can. I can go. I. Sure. I read. I started a book that uh, my girlfriend told Boom. me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> she told me it was one of the most impactful books that she's ever read, and I. Oh. I like. I finished it in a week, which is, I never do that with books. Um, Damn. I started it last Sunday and I finished it yesterday. And like, it's called the kite runner. And it is one of the oh. most like tragic and like good, just beautiful mm-hmm. stories that I have ever read, but also like, you know, just in general. And I think they did make a movie about it, but I don't, I don't know if it would hit the same, but um, right. yeah, man, it was just, terrible it's about you know like um afghan like people fleeing afghanistan from the russian invasion in the 80s and kind of like just growing on from that but also you know like how terrible the taliban were in the 90s stuff like that and mm-hmm. just very very dark at points um but just i mean just a fantastic story very beautiful so 10 out of 10 recommend yeah i definitely yeah i've, I've heard of that book years ago yeah it's it's pretty I, i'm, pretty I'm definitely things. late to the party for <laughs> sure but it yeah. is a classic for sure. That's awesome though. Oof, tough read, but yeah, yeah it is. what I've heard. But it's also very, it, very you, fucking good. But you just, you cannot, I couldn't take my eyes off it. Like I had to, I right. had to know what was going to happen next. So you're just like, yeah, very, very quick read. How long, I was going to say, how long of a read is it? Uh, I mean, it took me a week and I was reading pretty consistently on Sunday. I read like, I just kind of got like, I think two thirds of the way through and I just like, Kept going. Man, how many pages is it? it? Am so, I looking at a, a Lord uh, of the Rings seven hundred, or we're looking at like a two hundred no. <laughs> two hundred page book? No, it's not that. It's not that long, uh, but it, it's oh. also like very well written, and it, it reads. It's not. I don't want to say it's like an easy read, but it's like it's it's just like you, you. It's very. You just keep going. Like it flows. It flows. Yeah. It flows very well. Exactly right. It flows very well. Three hundred seventy-two so, pages. Okay. So you didn't want to answer my question. Three hundred and seventy-two. That you said three seventy-two. Oh, that's not bad at all. Yeah. Okay. Nice. That's awesome, Great man. Book. That's good. We don't ha- we don't get many books here on the. <laughs> I, I, guys, I'm gonna tell you, I cried when I read the, oh, last, like, the ending. I literally shed tears. Oh. Like, yeah. So, Oof. I don't think yeah. I. Bu- I don't know. I don't know if a book has ever made me cry. Before you telling me Old Yeller didn't make you cry? Nah. Wow. <laughs> because you know what, you know what's gonna happen. You already know what's gonna that's, happen at this point. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> you don't read nah. old. Nobody reads Old Yeller not knowing what's gonna happen. <laughs> um i can quickly finish up um i even with the fucking i had no time this week i watched a couple movies so i'll talk about one mostly um it was a documentary that's hit apple plus um this week or the past week or two um it's called still uh, a michael j fox movie it's basically a, a biopic documentary about michael j fox's life and um his early age diagnosis of uh parkinson's um, it's, it's a really fucking good documentary. It was a phenomenal movie. Um, it's only like 90 minutes, so it's not very long. Um, it's told like obviously documentary style. So it's told through him and in an interview talking about those things. But one of the coolest fucking parts of it is the editing and the storytelling of they got all of his like old footage from whether it's a movie or a TV show and incorporated it as they told this story. So, for example, like he's narrating, saying, I walked into this person's office, blah, blah, blah. They'll show footage from a random movie where he walks into an office and and do little things like that throughout the whole fucking thing. And be like, I went on a date with this person who who eventually became my wife. And it shows, because they were film stars before, and it'll show them from whatever movie they were filming going to like a restaurant, even though it's not the one that he's talking about. It's used in this film, in this context. Um... So that was all so well done. It's super cool. Obviously, there's a lot of Back to the Future stuff. If listeners don't know who Michael J. Fox was, he played Marty McFly in Back to the Future. Mm -hmm. Um, That's probably his most famous role. Um, And uh, yeah, it's just really well done. It's like heartbreaking at times, but at the end, it's it's a pretty like inspiring story of of this dude. Because obviously, like uh, one of the biggest things, if not a spoiler, he gets Parkinson's. (laughs) He's diagnosed at a very early age, which... Parkinson's disease is a disease that typically affects older people. And so it goes to the fact that like he hid his diagnosis for eight years from the public while still filming TV shows and movies and doing all these things. And it shows footage where you can see like his hand twitching in his early stages of the of, of it um, where no one knew. 
And like, and then, and it's like, oh shit, you can fucking see it in some of these old clips of TV shows. And it's nuts to think about. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's just, it's so well made and put together. And uh, he's still hilarious. He's still so funny. His comedic timing is crazy. Um, And it shows like his journey through his physical therapy and all this stuff and his family. Um, and it's just a really, really good fucking movie, and I'm really glad. I think people should check it out if they're if they're a fan. And also, if you don't know the story, it's really in, it's a really interesting story of how from his childhood to his early career and then to his current day life. Um, so yeah, it's really solid. Really, really, really good. Really good time. Um, and then the other thing I watched uh, was uh, Scream Six because I used <laughs> I got a trial of of Paramount Plus, mm. and I finally watched Scream Six. Uh, I don't think it's as good as five, but it's still a fucking good time. It's fun. If you like the franchise, it's it's not really none of I don't think any of the screen movies are really scary. They're mostly like kind of fun horror comedies almost to me at the times. Um, but it's entertaining. It, it's good and like just trying to figure out who the killer is, like all the screen movies is always a good time. I would say if you want to gra- get a couple drinks with some friends and watch it and then just, you know, chat about it and have have a good time watching it. Um yeah, it's fun. Continue the story of uh, after five with those characters. Um, considering this movie came out a year after the last one, I was like, damn, they are really just chucking these fucking <laughs> movies out. Mm-hmm. I never even saw five, but everything happened so quickly. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it was a good time. I enjoyed it. Those two movies, uh, and, you know, as usual, shout out to God of Ragnarok. All righty. <laughs> Boo, tomato, tomato. <laughs> Listeners, that is our show. We hope you enjoyed it. You can email us at thefortress.f at gmail.com. Fortress, but F-O-U-R. Feel free to email us any questions, feedback, recommendations, or anything you have about that. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and the YouTube channel at the Fortress of. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your grandma, tell your cat. Follow the three R's like a beautiful Bollywood movie. Rate, review, and recommend us to anyone and everyone you know. Thank you, Jackie, for helping out edit the podcast every week. Thank you, Brian, for the art. Alex, for the music. Devin, thank you for being here, even when you're not here. You can find Brian on Instagram at ITZ underscore. By the way, Alex at Peterson Films. And Devin, you can find him stealing his own bike as brian said on top of the show so yeah. if you find someone trying to bolt cutter a bike out just assume it's their bike don't then report it just assume it's their own bike putting a rocket on the back or some fast x shit all right <laughs> yeah like down the movie theater oh uh, yeah it's all about family next week <laughs> listeners uh i don't know we got we will make some stuff up we gonna figure it out it won't be a good time though and as usual, happy holidays, everyone. And put a coat on. It's cold out there. Especially when you're driving a rocket bike or rocket car that you're going to use to do a backflip and kill yourself with. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Can't believe he's dead. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> we'll see you here next week, listeners, in another episode in the Fortress of... Wait, I wanted to ask you guys one thing. What kind of socks do you think Dom Toretto wears? See, I think I was validated. Well, I don't, I never, I hadn't thought about this until I saw them, but then it was like, yes, that absolutely is what he would do. And where he's laying down with Letty at the beginning of the movie, he had his, his boots off for maybe the first time in the entire franchise. He was wearing those like white with like gray heel and toes, like the Hanes socks from like Walmart. And you know that Dom Toretto does all of his shopping at Walmart. Yes, wife beaters and Hanes socks on sale and he is mad as hell if they raise like five cents i just thought it was so fitting i was like yeah underneath all of that he's wearing those goofy ass like gray and white socks i can't i can't unsee it